Nothing will crush a real estate investor's spirit like landlord stress. The difference between being successful and miserable in managing properties is education. Welcome to Landlord University, where landlords learn. Landlord University is recorded from inside the rent prep office where Stephen White and Jeff Pearson share the lessons learned from working with some of the most successful landlords. Welcome to Landlord University Night School. I'm Jeff Pearson. I'm here with my co-host, Stephen White. Hello, Stephen. How are you this evening? Pretty good, Jeff. I uh, picked out this uh, this next topic, uh, talking about dealing with children and how landlords have to um, deal with children. I know that whether it's spoken or unspoken, but a lot of landlords don't like the idea of renting to children. And uh, as we know from other uh, episodes on the podcast and even in the news episodes talking about uh, familial discrimination, um, you can't you can't really unless you're running a senior community, you can't specify that you, <laughs> that children are not allowed. So I was doing some research and I found a really great site. Uh, it's called the Housing Rights Center. And you know, from a landlord's perspective, I always find these websites very interesting that um, that are geared towards addressing or answering a lot of uh, questions, not only from landlords, but from the tenant's perspective too. Yes. Um, you know, as a landlord, you want to know what's on, you know, from the tenant's point of view, what are they thinking? What are some of their concerns? What are they asking about? So interesting website. Check it out if you're a landlord for sure. But um, I, I found a handful of the most commonly asked questions uh, when dealing with children in rental situations. So I thought I'd go over them and give the response from the Fair Housing Authority of, of to the, each of these questions. Sounds good. So the first question um, Landlord receives a rental application for a two-bedroom unit from a family of four, two adults, two children. One of the child, uh, one of the children is a boy, the other is a girl. The landlord turned them down because he thought that the children should each have a separate room uh, since they were different sexes. He wanted to know if that was legal. Um, of course, the, uh, the the housing authority for housing. Uh, said, no, it's not. You cannot require that children of opposite sexes have separate bedrooms. These decisions are within the parent's control and not the landlord. So a uh, classic case of the landlord using what he thinks is good judgment. Um, and to a lot of us, that is very good judgment. As a parent, I would, you know, I probably I'm on the same page as that person. Unfortunately, you're a landlord in this case and not a parent. And so you have to let the parents be parents. And as a landlord, um, you know, you, you can't make that decision that, you know, your your place is, is not right for them because, you know, the brother and sister are going to have to share a room. Right. So that one's, uh, again, another good episode of uh, familial discrimination. So then we've got um, two. Uh, the next one is a, a two story apartment building. Um, they don't rent apartments above the first floor to people with small children. Uh, in this case, the landlord's afraid that small children could fall off the balcony. He doesn't want to get sued for it, wants to know if that's legal. Again, you know, I, I think just from good judgment, I, I tend to agree with the guy. I, I think, yeah, okay, so this place might not be suitable for, for children because you have a balcony. So not that he's on the wrong track, but again, you're the landlord in this situation, not a parent. Um so the answer from the the fair housing is no. You cannot deny somebody the opportunity to rent a unit because they have children, and the, the circumstances of the floor or whatever does does not matter. So I think, I think the bigger issue there, the bigger concern would be whether or not the railings on that balcony meet current legal guidelines. Yeah, you know there there are specifications for how tall they need to be, how much. Uh, distance in between each of the posts and all of those kinds of things. And those those types of laws have changed over the years. So if you're truly that concerned about it, I would say you know, check with your local uh, municipality and find out what the regulations are and make sure that, that your balcony meets those regulations. Mm -hmm. And then you're protecting yourself as best you can and protecting your tenants and, and their visitors. Yeah, I, I, you know, I didn't even think of that, but... That could have been a, a, you know, a distant concern for the landlord too. Is you know, this isn't up to code. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want the kid here. But yeah, I, I agree with you. If everything is 
where it should be up to code, then uh, you got to trust that the parent's going to keep the kid on the balcony and not flying over it. Exactly. So, all right. Uh, last question that they had on here that I thought was worth talking about was um, landlord who has a policy of charging new tenants additional security deposit for their children. So he adds $50 per child to the security deposit since, uh, in his words, kids usually cause more damage than normal, <laughs> uh, which he may be right. You know, I again, logically, I think a lot of these questions are very logical questions. Um, but again, you know, from a legal perspective, it's it's discrimination. You can't treat them differently than you would somebody who didn't have kids uh, based on their, again, the familial status. Right. So their official response is no, a landlord cannot require a higher security deposit or damage deposit from people who have children or minors. Um, it's important to point out that legally 18 and under or under 18, I'm sorry, is classified as as a child. OK. So they address that here. People who have children or minors um, and they even cite a court case. So California Supreme Court versus or in Wolfson, uh, federal, uh, federal fair housing law amended in 1988. It's unlawful to set deposits based on the stereotype that children as a class cause more damage to property than others. So if somebody really wanted to think about something like that, if they were to create a policy that said that they have a standard security deposit and then an additional $50 per person, mm -hmm. if they didn't specify children, there's nothing yep. theoretically against that. Yeah, it's it's, it's specifically when you when you identify a, a class. Mm -hmm. So that's you're exactly right. And matter of fact, uh, uh, a really interesting statistic that I found on the same site is uh, according to the U.S. Department of Justice, 24 percent of the complaints that they receive each year involve discrimination against families with children. So wow. it's a it's a huge issue. And, you know, again, I can see from a landlord's perspective, them saying, I don't want kids or I want to address these issues up front. And so they put it in their marketing, they put it in their agreements, their lease agreements, and they're doing these things that again, seem logical, but you just can't, you can't legally do it. Um, so again, yeah. I, it's something that we see a lot of times the landlords using uh, regular logic instead of legal logic. Mm -hmm. And it's important for people, again, we go back to the whole concept of running this like a business. And as a business, you have a responsibility to to maintain your, your approach to things. And in the case of discrimination, you can't discriminate. Mm -hmm. um, you have to establish your own guidelines based on legal principles as to the type of tenants that you want. And then when you get the applicants, you compare them against each other and make your decisions based on the legal aspects of what those tenants bring to the table, the good mm -hmm. and the bad. Uh, right. But when it comes to things like discriminating because they have children, it's not something that you can do. I agree. And I hate to lump anybody into any specific category or anything like that. And, um, you know, I, I think my experience, especially from a credit background, a credit perspective, the most litigious people that I've ever seen or I've ever had to deal with um, are very, very aware of their rights and are usually looking for these type of situations to present themselves, opportunities that's, sometimes, if you will. <laughs> that's a good piece of information. You know, you think yeah. that you're going to stay away from the problems by not renting to this person or this class of person. When in fact, you may be opening yourself up to more lawsuits. That doesn't mean that you're going to end up having to, that you're going to lose the lawsuits. But right. they're, they know their rights, as you said, and they're not afraid to file a lawsuit, which means you have to spend the money to get an attorney, to go to court, and do all of the things to protect yourself or defend yourself. Right. And if you just try to keep things more on the straight and narrow, you're probably going to be in better shape. I agree completely. I think that, uh, again, you know, we've said it before. A lot of times landlords kind of create their own problems. So uh, in this case, just knowing the law, being careful with your uh, your the language in your marketing, um, you know, don't put a sign up that says no kids allowed or anything like right. that. Those are the landlords that, you know, are just screaming for trouble and asking for it. So um, I would leave anything specific to children out of it and just deal with it, like you said, on a, 
treat everybody on the same sort of page on the same level. Yes, exactly. Well, great, Stephen. I think that wraps up another evening of night school. I'll look forward to talking with you tomorrow evening. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for listening to Landlord University. And remember to visit rentprep.com slash landlordu to see show notes and access free resources like forms and guides. And be sure to check out Jeff Pearson hosting his own hit podcast at thementorimpact.com.